B8. So uh, B8, um, again, is like an enthalpy problem where you have to relate, you know, different reactions and stuff like that and kind of standardize things. Um, and then in this case, right, it kind of, you know, has this like hypothetical, uh, you know, solution to to bring your fresh water to Southern California because they're like in dire need of it because they've been in drought conditions for years. I, I want to say probably over maybe over a decade now. I feel like for a very long time, Southern California has been in need of water. I think even like it's it's seeping over into Northern California now. That's why, you know, global warm, right? Things going crazy. Anyways, one of the ideas, right, that totally off the wall and it's a terrible idea. Um, all right. But, you know, if you want to get fresh water, right, you just melt icebergs, right? There's so many of them in Antarctica, even though like they're very quickly disappearing now. Um Right, but you could do that, right? And you can melt it and you can do all that, right? And then so the question becomes, you know, how much energy do you actually need to put in to melt, uh, you know, an iceberg, right? And so, you know, you can do the the general thermodynamic considerations for it, right? And calculate how much uh, heat, right, you're going to be uh, needing to, to put into that system to, to melt, you know, that much ice. And so we have the reaction, right, which is just simply the melting reaction where you're going from H2O solid to H2O liquid, right? A simple phase change. Um, right. And so the, the amount of energy required, um, to, to do that, right. For that melting process is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Um, and so, um, you know, if we take the, the value that we have right here, right. For, for an iceberg, right. It has about a mass of one times 10 to the six metric tons. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert metric tons into grams, right? Because the delta H of melting is in moles. And so we want to be able to convert that right into something that we can use, right? Something that we're familiar with. So uh, step one, right? Convert um, the mass in, of metric tons into into grams. And so we know that in that, right? From, from what I'm given in the problem, you know, 1.00 times 10 to the six, you know, metric tons um, is equal to, right? 1,000 kilograms right and so that's you know what one metric ton is worth and then we also know right that one kilogram is 1000 grams <clears throat> in these cases right so metric tons cancel right kilograms cancel so what we end up with is one to the power of six times 1000 times 1000 and so what we get is that in grams right one um large iceberg is one times ten to the 12 grams, right? And that's a trillion, that's a trillion grams. Um, it's a lot of grams, um, right? So we have that right there, right? So now we know what it is in grams. And so now the question is, okay, well, um, how many moles, right, of, of water, you know, is, is one trillion grams, right? So we have H2O, right? And so we have one times 10 to the 12 grams divided by right? What is it? 16 plus 1.01 .01 times 2 is 18.02 grams per mole, right? That's the molecular weight of water. So what we get is 1 times 10 to the 12 divided by 18.02. We have 5.55 times 10 to the 10 moles of H2O that we're working with here. Right. And so what we're looking at essentially is right. Q in this case, right, is going to be equal to um, the number of moles times the delta H of melting. Right. So we have 5.55 times 10 to the 10 moles times 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Right. So moles cancel. We end up only with kilojoules, so we have 5.55 times 10 to the 10 times 6.01 comes out to being, you need 3.34 times 10 to the 11 kilojoules of energy to melt all of that ice. Right, and that's what I have in the answer key. Um, right, so that's a lot of energy. Um, It's my dogs. For a second, I thought it was my. So, I don't know if you guys can hear, 
but for a second i thought like it was my baby crying but then i was like wait a second no he's a daycare um oh man crazy all right anyways so um and so the next part of this problem right is one of the ones where i again messed up with the versioning and i'd had the wrong answer down there but we'll fix that talking about it here but i'll also have it fixed in the answer key that i'm going to post um but anyways so um right so now the question is right so um you know you can you know, how much TNT, right, um, can you use to melt that ice, right? If you were to just like, you know, use a huge amount of explosives, right, you know, can you release enough energy? Like how, how much how much explosives do you have to use to, um, you know, essentially decimate, um, you know, a moderately large iceberg, right, that has a trillion, like that weighs a trillion grams, Um and everything. And so um, that's something that we can calculate, right? Because we know what the amount of energy that, you know, the delta H of detonation of um, TNT is um, in those cases, which we have right there. And then the second part of the question, right, is then, you know, if you were to use a single, like, you know, modern day thermonuclear warhead, right? How, like, the, would that provide enough energy, right? Uh, instead of just using TNT, right? We can just, you know, nuke um, a, a, a moderately large iceberg. Um, and so, right. And so, so we can look and we can, again, we can do all of that math and figure out what's going on there. So in terms of how to approach this problem, right? So we know how much energy, right? we know what Q is, we know how much energy is required. So now the question is how much, you know, uh, um, how many gram or how many kilograms, right. Of TNT would we need to use, right. To provide that amount of energy, right. And so, um, first things first, right? If we look at that equation that we have, right? The delta H of that reaction, we can see that based off of, you know, how that reaction is balanced, right? That for every two moles of TNT, right? That, that we detonate, we generate, you know, 1,035.8 kilojoules of energy, right? That's how much energy is released in that case. So the important first step is that we want to normalize that to what it would be for one mole of TNT, right? Because we can then just simply convert that into kilograms in those cases. So, um, right. And so if we were to, because uh, ultimately, right, what we're trying to figure out is how many kilograms of TNT we would need to, to you know, generate 3.34 times 10 to the 11th kilojoules of energy. Um, right. And so, um, you know, if we're looking at the right, so we have the delta H of this detonation. And so what we're looking for is essentially the delta H of, um, you know, for, for, uh, um, you know, per mole of TNT, right? So if we take that, right, we just simply do, you know, 1035.8 kilojoules, right? And we just divide this by two moles of TNT. And so what we get is that per mole of TNT, right? What we, the enthalpy is negative 10,035.8 divided by two, you get negative 517.9 kilojoules per mole of TNT, right? <clears throat> so we have that right there. So now what we can do next, right? Is we can convert that into how much energy is released when you do one kilogram of TNT, right? And so if we calculate out what the molecular weight of TNT is, right? So that's, you know, trinitrotoluene. So there's seven carbons. So that's 12.01 times seven. There are five hydrogens, right? So five times 1.01, .01. three nitrogen. So three times 14.01 .01 plus six oxygen. So plus six times 16. And so the molecular weight is 227.15 grams per mole, right? So we have all of that right there. And so now what we can do, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, convert then, right, the delta H that we have over, does the TNT have 500 or 300? I think there are two different numbers given in the question in the balanced equation. Um... I want to say it's five because the structure of TNT is that might be a mistake on my part. And thank you for pointing that out. Cause I don't think anybody else has uh, right. Cause toluene on its own, right. Is a CH3 group right here. 
And so then trinitrotoluene has three NO2 groups off of it, right? So NO2, 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 right? And then you have hydrogens here and a hydrogen here, right? And so there's five hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, one, two, three nitrogens, and then three times two. Yeah, so yeah, so I need to fix this. Let me do that real quick before I forget. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Nobody else has pointed that out to me yet. And nobody else has caught that. I think, I don't know. I always just look at the problem, I think, when I was doing the math part. Or I would just simply like Google molecular weight TNT um, and just use that number. Um, but this is the appropriate way to do this. All right. So B8, so that should be 5. Um, save. All right, and then let me change that on the key. All right, that's saved. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so the balanced equation was off. Um, all right, that should be, oh, that should be a five. Um, but yeah, so, so it should be 227.15. Um, I mean, if, if, if you would use the other one, right, you're just going to be off by like, I mean, that would just really introduce an error of like what 1%, I think. So, I mean, you, you'd still be pretty close. Um. Uh, I think in terms of what your actual number is, but where I messed up was, um, at one point, I, I don't remember what it was, but I ended up with too low of a kilogram number, I think in the original key, but hopefully we won't end up with that same problem here, um, which we shouldn't, it should be fine. All right. So, um, right. So we have, we have that. So it's 227.15 grams per mole is what we have here. So if we then convert this now into, per gram, right? What we then can do is divide this number, right? By 227.15 grams per mole of TNT. So what we get is negative 517.9 divided by 227.15. So we get then that for every gram of TNT, what you release is 2.28 kilojoules per gram of TNT. Right. So, so, um, so now it's related to the mass in that case, right? Because what we're trying to do is, you know, essentially figure out, you know, the mass. And so, if we wanted to, right, we can already go ahead and to and convert that into kilograms. And so, all we have to do for that, right, is just simply multiply it by a thousand. And so, I'm just going to move all this stuff over here. Right, so we have negative 2.28 kilojoules per gram of TNT, right? We multiply that by 1,000 grams over a kilogram. What we get is negative 2.2, I'll just stick with that right there, right? 2.280 kilojoules per kilogram of TNT, right? So... You're releasing, you know, 2 million, over 2 million kilojoules of energy when you detonate one kilogram of TNT, right? That seems like a lot of energy. Um, but yes, so, right, so we, so we have that right there. And so now the question is, right, how many, like, you know, how does that fit in, right? Because now we're just trying to figure out what the, how many grams, kilograms of TNT that we need. And so all we have to do, right, is we just take the value that we have up here, the 334. And so, you know, one thing to remember in terms of the signage, right, is that the Q of this part right here, right, of uh, the melt, right, Q melt has to equal negative Q, right, of the detonation in this case, right, which is going to be equal to, right, the Q of detonation is equal to the delta H that we have you know, up there. Um, and so if we're trying to figure out, right, and and, and slot all of those things into there, um, you know, what we can then do is just simply divide um, 
the the values that we have, right? And so now what we can do is, right, we have um, 334 or 3.34, right, times 10 to 11 kilojoules, right? That's how much we want to melt divided by 2,280 kilojoules, right? And I'm, so it's not going to be negative, right? Because it's going to be transferred over. So the signage changes kilojoules per kilogram of TNT. So the kilojoules cancel the kilograms of TNT goes up here. So what we get is 3.34 times 10 to the 11th divided by 2280, which comes out to ugh, what is that? Where's my pen to make this easier to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So which comes out to 1.46 times 10 to the 8 kilograms of TNT, right? So that's how many kilograms of TNT you need, um, right? That's 146 million kilograms of it. That's a lot of TNT, Um Right, but that's the amount that you would need if all of the energy from the detonation was purely transferred into the melting process. Obviously, right, that's not going to be the case um, because you know the amount of energy that gets released isn't going to strictly be thermal. It's also going to go into different um, forms of energy and everything. But um, you know, this is just a general thought exercise in doing stuff, right? So we have, so we have that. So now the question becomes, uh, right? So we know how many kilograms of TNT we would need. Now the question is, could a single W88 thermonuclear warhead do this job for us? So that way, right, we were only using, you know, one explosive instead of like probably like a whole bunch of, you know, dynamite sticks or whatever. Um, like it's a cartoon. Um, but if we go to right to that link that I had given you guys right where you can look it up, a W88 uh, warhead, that's an actual pen, um, right, has the equivalent of... What did I say? What did I find it right? 475 kiloton equivalents of TNT. Um, right. So, um, the, you know, when anytime, um, you know, people refer to, to a bomb as being like, oh, this is a 25 kiloton bomb or something like that. Those are always an equivalence to TNT. Right. So, um, you know, that's that many kilotons of TNT is, is, you know, one kiloton that. So in this case right here, right, we're looking at 475 kilotons of TNT, right? So we can convert that into kilograms, right? So just simply using what we have right here, um, right? Where one metric ton is equal to a thousand kilograms. So if we divide this, uh, or sorry, multiply this by a thousand, right? So 475 times a um, thousand, right? Comes out to uh, 475 thousand um tons right because it's a kiloton and so then another thousand is 4.75 how many zeros is this one two three four five six seven eight right that comes out to 4.75 oh 4.75 times 10 to the 8 kilograms in that case, right? So a, you know, if we do the ratio, right? So 4.75 divided by 1.46, right? Comes out to like 3.3. .3. So uh, a W88 thermonuclear warhead would have over three times the amount of energy, right, uh, required to, to, to melt it. So that's a lot of energy. And that's the thing to think about too, right? When you're uh, thinking about, you know, nuclear warheads, um, is that they release a lot of energy uh, when they explode. Um, and that's why you shouldn't, you know, use them lightly and, and stuff, um, you know, yeah, crazy stuff. But yeah, so that's how you do the math on all of that stuff and, and get a sense. Um, cool. All right, last question.